let's move on to Saquon Barkley because that's the question. You know, as a Giants fan, I like to think I'm logical, but I get emotional. And Saquon mm-hmm. Barkley is one of the people that I get emotional about. Yes. He's a giant. We always say he's a local kid. He's a Jersey oh, kid. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. the tri-state area, if you're from if you're from out here, it's like the DMV, uh, um, Virginia, D.C., and Maryland. That's New York, Jersey, and Connecticut. Mm-hmm. You know, even though we're, we're tribal in terms of, like, our geographical lines, we still – we're all one, the tri-state mm-hmm. area. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so – we root for Saquon in our darkest days as of recently. He was our shining light. So there's an emotional attachment from Giants fans. If you go to Giant Giants games, all you see is 26 jerseys. Yes. We want to see. I want to see him come back. Now, I don't know if the market, the money he wants, you know, I don't see us doing that. I don't see his franchise tagging him. But if you, if I had to make the decision, I bring Barkley back. Like I said, it may not be a logical decision, but it's an emotional decision. But here's Joe Shane talking about possibly the future of um, Saquon Barkley. You spot with Saquon because you went through so many you know, rounds of negotiations and you know, usually do that with a guy and be in the same spot the next year. How has his value changed in your mind from where you left it last July 15th or whatever that day was? I wouldn't say his value has, has changed, especially to the organization. Like he's, he's a captain, he's a leader, he's a hard worker. I, I think the world of, of Saquon, and I still think he can play. So my value for Saquon really hasn't changed. Unfortunately, throughout the process, starting back in November of 2022, we weren't able to come to an agreement in terms of where we both thought a deal made sense. So we'll circle back again. He has a new agent, uh, Ed Berry, who we have a really good relationship with, with CAA, really good Mm -hmm. guy and does a great job. So look forward to sitting down and having conversations with him. I think we've all grown, Saquon, myself, the organization, through the last 12, 13, 14 months, and Saquon may be in a different place now than he was then in terms of understanding the market and the business side of it, and I'm looking forward to having those conversations with him. Mm. At television, when you hear that, what does Mm. that sound like? I mean, it sounds like like sexy media talk, does that sound like that possibly could bring him back? Yeah, I mean, you know, it looks like the the, the, uh, that putting him on a franchise tag for the second straight year is not is not clearly off the table yet. You know, possibility they, they they won't, but it's a high possibility they they can. You know, he'll probably make like what like twelve point one million if they do resign him because you know it's all, all depending on 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 the NFL salary cap. I know they got like this whole salary cap structure thing going on in the NFL, if I'm not mistaken. So you know, it looks like you know he 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 trying he trying to make it sexy, but it could be a possibility we bring back. We bring back Saquon. Like, why not? You know, he's he's been the highlight for us the last couple of seasons, injured or not. You know, I feel like, you know, my personal opinion, they got to bring Saquon, man. They got to bring Saquon, especially with all that quarterback drama. They got to bring him back. And, you know, he sounded, to me, he sounded like he wants to bring him back. He's trying, they're trying to work something out to bring him back. Q, what you think? No, I agree. I th- I think I think hearing that kind of actually gives me a little bit of hope because you always, you know, you guys know my stand. I thought I thought Saquon was out of here. Like I I didn't have no faith of them even franchise tagging him because I don't feel like that's the type of organization that does shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like let, let let the guy go. Like if somebody wants to go, let him go and and, and see where he's because he's gonna go somewhere. Yeah, he and he could go somewhere. You know, he still has at least four four prime years left. Three three, three minimum. Three prime years left, and and those could all be thousand yard rushing years. Um, but hearing him talk about it, and the key word of that conversation was his new agent and good relationship with him. So now, so now, does that mean they're gonna probably throw some additional incentives? Like I don't know what this deal is gonna look like. It might not look pretty money up front, but behind, behind, behind the, you know, behind the window, behind the, the you know, what I mean, back end, yeah, the yeah. back end. You know, Homie rush a thousand yards, might get an extra two mil. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, homie mm-hmm. catches 45, 50, uh, 60, 70 passes, might get an extra 600,000. You know what I mean? Like, I feel yeah. like with him, they're going to make him earn the money, you know, and, and which wouldn't be bad because he plays at a high level caliber. And I think New York needs him. Yes. I think New York needs him. He's the only, mm-hmm. he's the only, he's the only, no homo, no, sexy thing. <laughs> uh, uh, when you think about the Giants, you don't mm-hmm. think about you know what I mean. Like the only other person after that is Kayvon Thibodeau. That's yeah, it. yeah. Because uh, oh, oh, and and Dexter Lawrence, but mm-hmm. you know, but when but w- 
people always misguide them. They, they always jump over the hurdle of the defense mm-hmm. and they go, unless they're doing it extra dominantly well, but the team got to be winning in order for yes. the defense to get love. But in the offensively, it's always going to be either the quarterback, a wide receiver, or a running back. Let's mm-hmm. keep it a buck, you know? And I don't think franchises, Tim, Franchising him is going to be a good idea. I don't think that just shows you're running a good organization, even though I know what you're trying, what they're trying to do. But you don't want to, number one, you don't want to make the player feel like, damn, bro, you're keeping me here and I have nowhere else to go, even mm-hmm. though he does. He and has, now a- I got, you know, and, and I have options. Like, let mm-hmm. me just go somewhere or just give him what they could have gave him a little bit. I, I think they should have just overpaid for him by like maybe two mil a mm-hmm. couple of years ago, mm-hmm. just spending six million dollars. For these guys, like they could have, they could have paid Daniel Jones an extra million and a half less yes. for those four years, and then probably got Saquon Barkley a contract. Saquon Saquon Barkley is one of the premier running backs in football, no doubt about it. I would even, I would even not even jump out the window. I would even go as far as to say he's number two behind Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I had them neck thing. and neck. I'm gonna give it. The, I'm gonna give it a, to, to, to McCaffrey yeah, right now. Know. Um, however. There are a lot of running backs on the market, and this is like a lot, man. You are going to get what the market dictates, and every position is the same thing. When quarterbacks come up, they usually get a little bit more than the last guy got. Each guy continues to break the bank. The market for running backs, the price tag on the market for running backs is not that high, right? That's why we're having this running back problem. Look at the guys who've been... There's a report that came out. 2024 NFL franchise tag tracker. Top running backs who will not be tagged. Um, Giants, Saquon Barkley, obviously. That's, they, they say that. Cowboys, Tony Pollard. Mm-hmm. Titans, Derrick Henry. Raiders, mm-hmm. Josh, Josh Jacobs. Jacobs like, yes. Chargers, Austin Eckler. That's Eckler. just a couple of the name off the top of my head. These guys are all yeah. prolific guys. Now, Derrick Henry, not Ooh. a great season. As great as a season as, as he normally has. So I'm thinking he might have fallen off just a touch. Still had a really good season. Mm. Austin Eckler, baller, right? My point is this. You can go through the draft and get a running back that's going to perform well. You know, I thought Eric Gray might be that guy. We don't know. He looks like he's better on special teams. Mm. But, <laughs> you know, and that's not a knock. I just I, – I, he, he didn't blow my socks off, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I bet I bet he did. But but that's, nah, but, but yeah, but that's the opposite. But no, nah, um my, my my point is like and I hate to say it like this, but running backs are a dime a dozen, man. Yeah, you know unfortunately, what I'm especially in the in today's market. mental value has no place with these GMs and these oh, and these and these agents, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So my gut feeling, I don't know why. My gut feeling says Saquon will. I, I'm going back and forth for this. Like, you know, Q was like, he's, he won't be here. And I was like, yes, he will. Then I text you the other day, y'all. You know what? I think he might be right. I don't think he's going to be here. But my gut feeling says that they'll work out a deal because I think he wants to be here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but I could be wrong. He might want to go somewhere else and, and, and compete for a ring. 